Hi everyone, thank you so much for joining me today. So today we're going to be making five cards using this new collection called Click With Love by Naneka for Funky Fossil Designs. It is absolutely gorgeous. This collection is perfect for card making, art journaling, scrapbooking and if you're into making memory albums or photo albums it would be absolutely perfect for that as well. The papers are just packed with gorgeous details, um, cameras, flowers, butterflies, uh, bokeh effects, really really pretty and of course there's a little ephemera page so you can cut out sentiments as well. Now there's several stamp sets with the collection, there's the bokeh flowers which is the main A5 one, then there's the making memories sentiment stamp set and the light chaser stamp set and then there's these gorgeous ribbons, there's four designs in the pack and these work absolutely perfectly with the papers in the collection, there's lots of lovely details on here and if you've not used ribbons before they make for really quick and easy card making as I'll show you later on. I've got three of the stencils from the collection here as well, which are absolutely beautiful, packed with details and perfect for creating your own backgrounds. So today we're going to make five natelets, as I said at the beginning. I've got these smaller 4x4 four four card blanks, which I really want to use up. I've got quite a few in my stash and they're a great size for kind of playing around with layouts without worrying too much about a really big blank canvas. So for the first card, I've got Saltwater Taffy Distress Oxide. I've got a Funky Fossil blending brush and I'm just going to pop a piece of copy paper in between the card and then ink blend from the centre of the stencil out just so that we get a really lovely, soft, subtle background on the card. Then I'm going to use one of the ribbons as my focal point uh, for this card. So I'm just cutting out the camera image, just kind of working out where I want my layout to be. Now you'll see that the full ribbon doesn't actually fit on this card blank, but that doesn't matter. I'm working out which bit of the ribbon I want off the page, and then I'm just going to push down using the little lollipop stick that comes in the pack until I've made sure that I've rubbed all over that and the ribbon has transferred nicely to the card blank. The little piece that's left over, I'm just going to pop back on the release paper, and then I can pop that to one side for another project. And then again, I'm going to use a rub on here for the sentiment. And this is really just to show you how quick and easy it is to create a card using just a little bit of stenciling and some rub -ons. In fact, the stenciling wouldn't even be necessary. You could just use rub -ons here. So I've popped a little sentiment and then I've cut out one of the butterflies. And yes, you can layer the rub -ons over the top of each other. So that's what I've done here. And then a few of the extra dots I've added to the side. And here's just a couple of close-up photos of that first card that we've made. So for the second card, again, I'm going to do some ink blending. So I've popped a piece of copy paper in between the card. I just needed to clean off my brush as it had been used for a different colour. And this time I'm using Speckled Egg and then Uncharted Mariner. And I'm just going to blend the two together on this card uh, front. I'm just using a piece of card there just to stop my fingers getting all inky. And I'm just making sure that I get a nice coverage and a nice blend of the two colours together. Once I've done that, I'm going to spray it with a little bit of water just to add a little bit of extra interest. I'll dab it off with my cloth and then once it's dry, I'm just going to open the card flat up on my glass mat. And then I'm going to add some stamping and I'm using this gorgeous ink. It's a dye ink from Stamps by Me called Ocean. It's a lovely kind of blue colour. And I'm just going to use that uh, with these Boker Effect stamps that come in the A5 stamp set. So I'm just going to lightly ink the stamp up gently press it down and I'm just going to keep repeating this with the different size circles in the stamp set and it creates just a lovely little bit of extra interest on the background panel. This dye ink pad from Stamps by Me is water reactive so that's why I needed to make sure that my card panel was completely dry before I used it and I'm still just kind of experimenting and trying these inks out. So far I'm really pleased with them, they're so vibrant and bright and juicy um, so yeah, I'm just still kind of experimenting with them. And it's nice to have a dye ink that's water reactive and um, that isn't like oxidized, like the oxides, I love them, but they do have like a creamy finish. And sometimes you want a really bright, vibrant color. So I'm really just enjoying playing around with those ink pads at the minute. I'm then just coming in with some stenciling using the Uncharted Mariner. I'm just using the excess ink on my brush. And then I'm gonna add this, um, rub on in the center of my card so again I'm just rubbing it all over here with that lollipop stick just to transfer the image to the card now I wished I'd have played around with my layout a little bit better first because I would have liked to have put the rub on slightly further over um, and it just affected where I chose to place the camera here but in the end the overall card I was really happy with how it turned out 
The camera I'd already stamped and coloured off camera and fussy cut it out. So that's from the Light Chaser stamp set. And then I've just used one of the Ribbon Butterflies, again, just to add a little bit of extra interest. For the sentiment, I've cut this out of the paper pad. Again, I've done that off camera. And I'm just going to add a few white splatters first before I stick the sentiment down. And the sentiment just says, keeping memories. I've popped it up on a little bit of foam tape. And then that just finishes off the card nicely. And here's just another couple of close-up photos. For the third card today, we're going to use a piece of the paper pad. Now, this is where these papers are just absolutely gorgeous. There's so many elements that can be cut out. So I've chose to fussy cut the edge of this piece out. I'm uh, just going to cut around the flowers and the film strip. And then I'm just going to use that along the left-hand edge of the card blank. I'm using my cutter piece scissors here. The papers are not too thick, so they're nice and easy to fussy cut out. And I'm just working out how low down I want the camera and then I'm going to cut off the excess once I've stuck it down. And using the papers like this is a great way of creating a really quick focal point on your card and just keeping it nice and simple. Because all we're going to need to do now is I'm just going to add a little sentiment and add a few splatters. So I'm going to add a sentiment from the Making Memories stamp set. And these are absolutely gorgeous. I love sentiments that have got double fonts in them. I'm just inking it up with some Versafine Claire Nocturne Black Ink. And I've used the sentiment which says, every picture tells a story. I'm just going to use some Black Soot Distress Oxide Ink just to add a few black splatters here. You do need to use a water reactive ink if you add in splatters. And here's a close-up photo of the finished card. So for our fourth card today, I'm going to create a card front and then a matte layer for this one. So I'm just trimming down a piece of watercolour cardstock, three and three quarter inches squared. I'm then using my grip mat to hold the card in place and I'm going to use these gorgeous inks from Stamps by Me. I'm using Indigo, Magenta and Ocean. And because they're water reactive, that's why I'm using them because I really want to try something with these Boker Effect stamps. So I'm just stamping the circles here, there and everywhere on the card front and making sure some of the circles overlap. And once I've stamped to the side, I'm just spritzing my stamp with some water and just wiping them clean. Once I'm happy with those, I'm just coming in with a paintbrush and some water. And all I'm doing is just going around the edges just so that the ink starts to blend into the centre of the circles and that really kind of just gives a really subtle bokeh effect and I just think it's a really nice way of using water reactive inks it's a nice way of stamping as well because you're stamping in a different colour than you'd normally stamp in I think sometimes we're, we constantly stamp in blacks and browns and greys but this was just a nice way of using the ink pads and stamps in a slightly different way I'm just heat setting it with my heat tool because then I want to add some stenciling over the top I'm coming back in with the magenta ink here and I've just brought my grip mat back in just to hold that in place uh, to try and avoid getting inky fingers. And I'm just kind of subtly going through it, picking out different elements on the stencil just to add to the background. Once I'm happy with that, I'm then going to add a matte layer of pink cardstock that's just from my stash. So I'm just going to cut that down to size. I've cut this to, to three and seven eighths squared um, and then I'm just going to add some glue to the back of that and stick that down. Then for the focal element on this card, I'm going to use another camera that I'd already uh, coloured and cut off camera. Um, this again is from the Light Chaser stamp set. And I decided that the flowers that I'd already coloured and cut just didn't quite suit this card. So I thought I'd use one of the film strip stamps. Now this is the film strip from the Light Chaser stamp set. It's a slightly smaller one. But I just really felt that it kind of got a little bit lost in the busy background. So I'm using the larger film strip stamp from the Boca flower stamp set and I think that that just looks a lot better on the card. I'm using my Tim Holtz long bladed scissors to trim this down and then again I'm just kind of going to see how it looks behind and I just think that looks a little bit better. So I'm just going to get those elements stuck down so I'm just using some glue here and then I'm going to pop the camera up on a little bit of foam tape and then once that's all stuck down I'm then going to decide on what sentiment I want to use. I bring back in the Making Memory stamp set and I choose to use the sentiment that says smile and I fussy cut this sentiment out kind of around the letters almost like I was fussy cutting it and this just gave it a nice border around the edge. So once I'm happy with that, I'm then just going to add a little bit of foam tape to it and I decide to stick that in the bottom left hand corner. Before I do that though, I do decide just to attach the card front to the card base. And then once I've stuck these sentiments down, I do just decide to add some glossy accents just to some of the um, points on the camera. And then that is the fourth card finished. So here's a couple of close up photos for that card as well. 
So for the fifth card in today's video, I'm using this gorgeous floral stamp from the Boca Flower stamp set. And I'm just going to stamp it in black ink directly on the card blank. And then I'm going to clear heat emboss it just so that it's going to be easier to watercolour later on. Off camera, I'd already created a mask using this stamp. So I just stamped this stamp on the masking paper. I used the Gina K masking paper and then I clear heat embossed that as well. Especially when you're making a mask for a really detailed stamp and you've took the time to fussy cut it out, you really kind of want to make the mask last as long as possible. And that's where clear heat embossing it really helps. So once I've heat set that on the front of the card, I'm just coming in with the mask now and I'm just going to add that over the top. It's really easy to line up and then I'm just putting the backing paper to one side so that I can pop that back on the mask when we're finished with it. So once that's all in place, I'm just going to fold the card flat and tack it in place because we're going to do some stamping again. And again, we're going to use these gorgeous bokeh circles. This time I'm using the indigo uh, ink pad from Stamps by Me and again I'm just using all the different circles. This time I use the smaller ones from the Light Chaser stamp set as well just so that we've got um, different size circles all over the card. So once I've done all of that stamping with the circles I'm just going to add a little bit of second generation text stamping in the background. I'm using the large sentiment from the Light Chaser stamp set and it just adds a little bit of extra interest to the background. I've then just come in with my Winsor & Newton watercolour cotton pan set and I'm just adding some watercolour to the flowers and the leaves of this stamped image. I'm just using a round number four brush if you're interested. Um, I will pop links to these products in the description box below as well. I just like watercolour in because I find that the colouring, um, you get natural variations with watercolours. And it's just a little bit easier and quicker to get colour down on a page, especially if you don't want to spend too long colouring. It's also um, quite easy just to pop colour down. You don't have to worry too much about shading if that's not your thing. And I like that when watercolour dries, you get variations in the colours as well. I'm just going to add a couple of these rub-ons to the top left top right sorry and bottom left corners i'm just going to cut out those dragonflies they're really really pretty and they're really small so i've just fussy cut those out and i'm just again using that lollipop stick to just rub them on the page and transfer them you could of course use a score tool if you prefer as well then for a sentiment i choose to use the you are beautiful stamp this time and i'm going to use that on some black cardstock and i'm going to heat emboss it in some uh, super fine white embossing powder from wow so i'm just inking that stamp up with some versa mark embossing ink i've just run my anti-static powder bag across the black strip of cardstock and then i'm just going to add the white embossing powder here i'm just using a little paintbrush just to get off a few little bits where um it's stuck to the cardstock a little bit so i'd obviously missed it with the anti-static powder bag and then i'm just going to heat set that here with my um heat tool once that's heat set, I'm just going to trim it down to size. I just want to trim off the excess black border and then I'm going to add some foam tape to the back of it and I choose to stick that to the top left hand corner of the card. And then that's our five cards finished for today. So thank you so much for joining me. I really hope that you've enjoyed seeing this collection, seeing how much potential it's got to create beautiful, quick and easy cards and journal pages. And please don't forget to like and subscribe if you've enjoyed this video and I'll look forward to seeing you in the next one. Take care.